At the outbreak of the Second World War, G stations went off the air and all of their transmitters were impounded by the post office. The same action was taken in Germany on the 1st of September 1939 but three operators were allowed to keep their equipment. The most well known of these was D4BIU whose contacts with American stations caused a great deal of interest throughout the world. The object of the exercise was propaganda. The authorities wanted to convince the rest of the world that life in Germany was continuing as normal despite being at war. Gradually, more licenses were issued until there were 150 stations on the air, most of them on the 80 and 40 metre bands. In England, G7FA to G7FH were call signs used for clandestine contacts with Germany during the war. Early in 1945, these eight British stations with the unusual G7 call signs appeared on the bands. The suspicion in Germany was that these stations were located on the east coast of England. At first it was thought that they were pirates and all QSOs were prolonged in order to try and identify them. The contacts were conducted in a polite and correct manner and a log of all traffic was passed to the authorities in Berlin. It's quite probable that some of the wartime QSOs between the German amateurs and the G7s were probably between old friends from before the war. On the 24th of June 1945, about 30 HB7 stations operated a communications exercise on the 80 and 40 metre bands and once again there were contacts made with G7 stations. No official explanation concerning the activities of the G7s has ever been given by British sources. They must have had some intelligence function but it's not clear whether this was to find out about the German stations or to provide a link for anyone in Germany, for example prisoners of war or secret agents who had radio equipment and needed to contact England. Another thought was that they were set up to help locate pirate operations from Britain. Other stations were heard by German amateurs but these were using G4 and G9 industrial calls and were likely pirates, possibly a lone operator doing an uneventful night shift at a signal station somewhere in Europe. After the war the bands gradually returned to normal with Swiss amateurs operating officially from the 26th of November 1945 and British amateurs in the December of the same year with permission to use these 6 and 10 metre bands. Operation for G-stations on the other bands resumed in July of 1946 and the first official Delta Lemurs came on the air in 1949. The G plus 2 letter series was used for special purposes only. G7 was an early Arctic expedition station and G7FA to FH were the ones used for the clandestine contacts with Germany during the war. The call signs beginning G7 were difficult to track down because after the war the official view from the regulatory department was that there were no G7s in force anymore. Even stranger was that they had no record of any previous use. G7A plus one series were issued before the end of the war by the radio security service to the voluntary interceptor operators. These amateurs were allowed to work 70 MHz from home and to make contact with stations operating as pirates inside Europe. This would enable the radio security service to get bearings on these clandestine operators. After this, G7 calls were allocated to maritime colleges for training stations. These colleges had a replica ship's wireless station operating into dummy loads and used to have call signs such as G7TM in Southampton. Apart from this, a non-directional beacon was heard transmitting a G7 plus 2 call in MCW, or modulated continuous wave, just above the top of the long wave broadcast band in the Chelmsford area of Essex in the early 1980s. This may indicate that the series may have been used for general test and development purposes too, however this isn't confirmed. Which brings us nicely to the more elusive G9 call signs. The G9 plus 3 series call signs were allocated to non-amateur test and development licenses, mainly for industrial purposes. G9 AED was issued to the mobile TV transmitter built by Belling and Lee Limited for service area tests just before the start of Band 3 broadcasting in the mid-1950s. Many TV dealers used the G9 AED test card for demonstrating television sets just before ITV started. Quite a few amateur radio dealers used G9 calls for testing rigs on the air and several G9s were issued in the early 1980s for a new UHF CB radio service, one being G9BUP. 
The G9 calls, although elusive, were not very mysterious. They came in the private experimental station category, more commonly known as test and development calls. They were assigned to organisations who designed or repaired equipment and needed to test it on the air. During the 1980s and 1990s, G9 calls were only issued where speech was involved and not for video or data transmission. During the early 1980s, two G9 call signs were commonly heard on the phone around the Peterborough area on 3520 kHz. One was a very powerful base station, while the other appeared to be a mobile station of some sort. They could be heard discussing the terrain, the signal strengths and other details, with call signs given at the end of each over. Others have been heard down in the south of England too, most likely manufacturers testing. The British Aerospace Factory at Woodford in Cheshire held a G9 call sign as well. By the end of the 1980s, G7 and 3 letter call signs were being assigned to Class B license holders, but G9s were never issued as normal amateur radio call sign, and there is little evidence of the experimental G9 these days, as there doesn't appear to be a list of allocated call signs. It's worth noting that G9BF was used in radio publications from 1946, but this was just a humorous section based on a fictitious call sign. Some G9 plus 1 call signs have been allocated as club calls in recent years, G9A to North Wakefield Radio Club, G9D to an unknown special event station in Essex, and G9F to Roger G4BVY. And these are amongst a few very limited numbers. So I hope you enjoyed this look at secret G7s and elusive G9 call signs. The G9s are something that you don't hear on the air at all these days. And if anyone actually has a list, it'd be interesting to see which ones were allocated.